Hi everyone. Hope you're good. My name is Marvelous. And your your mentor and a televangelist. I brought you an important topic today. If you don't want your marriage to crash, there are things you need to do. These are the things that brought away. Things that cause problems in marriage. These are the things I want us to look into today. It is one thing to get married and it's another thing to stay married. You know, So many of us that got married we had a wonderful time with our couple, we talked with our spouse, but because of one thing or the other, some negligence, the marriage hit the rock, and today they are single parents. So as a youth, I wouldn't want you to be a victim. That's why I want you to know, if you're yet to get married, you need to know how to maintain your marriage so that the marriage will not crash. If you're already married as a youth, you need to learn how to keep going, selling smoothly, so that the storms of life will not crush your marriage. There are more than 20 things you need to know, or, or factors that lead to uh, crashes of marriages. You know, we we'll just mention a few of them. You can add to the list. By the way, if you've not uh, subscribed to my YouTube channel, please try to do so. So that if you drop any new video, you'll be the first to get it. Um, try to follow me also on Facebook. When you do that, you will be the one that will benefit more because we are dwelling mostly on the youths. You know, our Facebook name remains Marvel GS TV. Why Twitter is uh, Marvel, Marvel Gist or Marvel at Twitter. Just try to follow us on Twitter and Facebook so that at any time a new video is dropped, you'll be able to grab it and make use of it. And I promise you, you will never remain the same. We have a mandate to mentor the youth into a successful adult. What our parents face, we're not going to face it. Because we are the era of information. And information is power. What you don't know is greater than you. But when you get abreast with the information you need to know, the problem your daddies and mommies face, you will not face them. We are first person generation. This is 21st century. And I want to welcome you to today's topic once more. How to avoid problem in your marriage. Number one thing you need to put in mind is infidelity. Infidelity is a major cause of problem in marriage. Many of us don't see our spouses as our sexual fantasies. That is why we're having issue. If you're a lady, your husband should be your sexual fantasy. When you're fantasizing, creating mental pictures or imagining, your husband should be the focal point, not your ex. In the same vein, a man, you're having some fantasies about sex. Your wife should be your sexual fantasy, not your ex girlfriend, not the girl you're crushing at. You should be, your wife should be your crush. That's the only way to avoid infidelity in marriage. Infidelity has destroyed so many marriages because not everyone can tolerate it. Once a woman starts jumping from one woman to the other, sorry, from one man to the other, you have ruined your home. The same thing is applicable to a man. You start, you start jumping from one girl to the other. You have ruined your home. It's not every woman that can tolerate infidelity. So we'll just walk away from the marriage so they can go ahead and cheat. The same is applicable to a man as well. So let us try as much as possible to avoid infidelity at all costs. No matter the temptation, no matter how the devil, the devil will paint the picture to appear so assertive to you, try to run away from infidelity if you want your marriage not to crash. Number two, laziness. This is another problem. Another problem you need to avoid. Don't be a lazy man. Try to work hard. In order to put food on somebody's table tomorrow. In the same way, a woman try to be a supportive wife, try to work. And as much as a man is the breadwinner of, of the home, you as well can as well as well support him. Don't just relax at home that you're looking taking care of children. 
Children go to school. They don't stay with you 24 hours, except on Saturdays and Sundays. Sundays they go to church. Even some also go to lesson on, on Saturday. So those few hours they are away from home, make sure you're doing something meaningful with your life. You can enroll in, in lessons. You can, you, know, you can do things. You can do some home businesses. You can sell pure water. You can sell recharge card. You can do some online stuff that can fetch you a few money in your account so that you will not be a dependent wife because it brings problem. Let us show laziness at all means, at all costs. Get yourself involved. Be actively involved in things that are going on. Don't just be, don't, don't be a lazy about. When others are acquiring a degree, go ahead and acquire a degree, read. Many of us are just lazy, not because there's no money to sponsor, to go to the higher institution. It's just because we're lazy. We don't want to engage our brain. We don't want to be mentally alive. We don't want to read. Just because you're married, you just think that life ends there. Life doesn't end in marriage. There are so many things to keep on doing after getting married. As your partner is growing, make sure you grow. Both financially, academically, mentally, emotionally. Don't be lazy in any time. Spiritually, you have to you, you grow as well. Don't just be lazy about it. When your partner is increasing, increase with him or with her. This is the way to churn laziness. Another one I want you to be careful of or aware of is in-laws. Many in-laws has done more harm than good to marriages. Your dad and your mom are not to be the center of attraction in your marriage as a youth. I know your daddy's boy or mommy's girl, but you don't need to call your mom anytime you have issue with your spouse. You have to grow up and be mentally mature and emotionally, emotionally mature and suitable. When you have little misunderstanding or quarrel with your partner, that is not a time to start calling your parents, involving them in your matrimonial home. By the time you start complaining to your parents about your wife or your husband, you have lost it because third party have started creeping in. And they will start now seeing your partner as a troublesome man or a troublesome woman. That's why you must protect your partner. But when it comes to the point of uh, domestic violence, you have to cry out. Or just let you misunderstanding. Let don't start telling them what has transpired between you and your spouse. Try to know how to handle things. You disagree at times to so agree. You come to a compromise after the little disagreement. It's not even little disagreement that happens in your home that your parents you know about, so that you still have your dignity and your respect as a couple. Another thing I want us to look at is delay in childbearing another factor that can cause problem in marriage. Call it barrenness, call it childlessness, call it impotency on the part of the man. Both of you should tackle it together. Whatever that causes delay in childbearing or childbirth in marriage should be tackled between the couples. It's not the time to start judging your partner, telling your parents that this woman has aborted so many pregnancies, that's why she's not able to conceive a pregnancy. It's not a time for you to tell your parents that your husband has, has been flirting around with so many women that's why he could not impregnate you, but he has low span counts. Even if he has low span counts, you don't need to tell the, blow the trumpet and tell the whole world that your husband has a low span count. If you belittle your husband, you also belittle yourself. So let us learn how to manage our in-laws and also manage delay in childbirth. When you have delay, go to hospitals, good, meet good gynecologists. Also equally, make sure, you know, you don't stress yourself so much because stress is a major cause of delay in childbirth. Emotional imbalance. Anything that happens within you can affect your, your fertility rates. So that's why I have to be mindful. Some of us, our job are very tedious and we always stress up. That's why a time when you see that it, the child is not forthcoming, you can go on, on a vacation with your husband to a place both of you can just be alone. You can just go on a trip. Stay there for a week or two. You can plan your leave towards that time. You go there, be together, cuddle, talk, listen to music. You can go to the beach together, lodge in a hotel. Leave your environment. Forget about your job or your work. Off your phones. Fall in love with him or her again. Fantasize together again. Do crazy things together. And believe me, before you leave that place, <laughs> go back to that gynecologist and test you. You'll be positive. Yeah. 
Because at times, things that happen inside always mar our chance of conception. Stress, worries. A young man, that's not a time for you to allow your mom. If your mom is a troublesome type or quarrelsome type, that's not a time to allow her to come and start harassing your wife. Even if it is her fault. Even if it is her fault, you have to stand by her at that time. If it is your husband's fault, maybe your husband has low spend counts. It is a time to stand by him. It's not a time to castigate him or tell all your friends that he has low spend counts or he has infected with infection. No. Try to mellow down. Be a sweet couple. And with love and perseverance, you can fight anything that want to temper the love that both of you share. We have talked about a loss. We've talked about barrenness or delay in childbirth. These are major causes of problem in marriage. If you are not careful, you may be prejudged as a man to go and get a second wife and you chase your wife away. The wife of your youth, the woman you loved and cherished. So I want us to be careful. It, it pays to stand by your wife or by your husband. So women, their parents were able to leave the man. But the man might be an impotent man. There, there are some remedy. Maybe the man is not open, he does not tell you at the initial time and you discover it after the marriage. But if the man has been open to you, is there, there's no problem that is not that can that does not have solution. There is remedy to every malady in life and marriage. So try to stand by your couple, sorry, by your partner. Come rain, come shine, stand with each other, and you can conquer any mountain together. Because love is the strongest force in the universe. When you love each other, stand by each other, no matter what people say. Don't try to listen to what people say. Don't allow your love for each other to be shaken. Believe that God can do everything. Go to church, pray prayers, and you probably go to good, good clinics, good hospitals that are good fertility. I'll tell you, and take a leave as I told you. No, go and you know, enjoy yourself somewhere else, alone, undistracted, off your phone. And before you know it, there will be good news. That child that you're expecting will come. And God's name will be glorified. The enemy will be put to shame. Because so many people are eager to see you fair. Even the so-called uh, friends, friend enemies or friendly friends. No, you don't marry now. Make say you go to now. I give her just one year, you just run leave that marriage. Prove them wrong. Prove those your enemies wrong. Stand by that your spouse and fight together to overcome that problem. So that those ones that are telling you, see, it is like a feast them and they'll say, ah, hey, congratulations. Yeah, those people that spoke evil against you will come to congratulate you if you persevere. Don't allow their predictions to manifest in your life. So let's go ahead. Another thing I want you to fight about is dating. Many of us are dating. We are lacking personal hygiene. Cleanliness, they say, is next to godliness. Learn how to be neat. By the way, if we are not neat, your couple, will not, we are a husband, our wife wouldn't have girls attracted to you. So keep on being neat. Don't say, I beg, I don't already marry. What not they look for again? I don't born. I'm not they look for husband again. It's a lie from the pit of hell. As a matter of fact, it is one thing to get married. It's another thing to stay married. The way you package yourself before you go to a husband attracted, I got a wife attracted to you. Keep on packaging. So men will wear one bossa for one week without washing it because they are lazy. And they don't know how to be personally hygienic. So we'll just wear it and throw it. They won't even bother to wash it. And they believe, that, they believe that when they get married, the wife will be a slave washing. I'm not saying it's not good for a wife to help the husband. But your husband, try to be neat. When you wear a boxer, change it. Clean it. And your wife too. You can as well help your husband. Shave your armpits. Don't allow any hair at all. Be big. So make sure you are clean. So men... They don't know how to shave well. When you kiss your wife, don't allow the beard to give, make her to feel discomfort. Shave very well. Use good perfume. Roll on. So you, you, you smell good. Many of us have bad body odor and mouth odor. And when they speak like this, ah, it will be so stinking. So let us learn how to work on ourselves. If you have body odor, there are things. You can use to cure this body odor so that you'll be attractive. Ladies, please, your hair. 
Make sure they are neat. Even if you want to carry low coats, make them neat. When hairs are long, they are being admired. When they are short, they are also they are when they are short, they are admired. When they are long, they are envied. So make sure you keep it neat. Like your hair nets should be washed, let it be neat. Your or your or your night gowns, night gowns, let them be neat. Your underwears neat. Change your pants often. During your menstruation, know, know how to take care of yourself. Don't use one sanitary uh, pant twice. Use them only once. If you put any sanitary pad, any pad, even if it doesn't have any blood stain, once you have used it, don't use it again. Don't reuse it again. Be neat. Smell good. Use good deodorant and good perfume and body sprays to, to be neat. Don't be scared of water. Many of us are afraid of water. <laughs> Take proper baits. Baits. Make yourself look beautiful and attractive. And keep on being beautiful inside. Because when you are beautiful inside, to radiate outside, be mindful of what you eat. Drink water often so that your skin will be radiant and also fresh. Eat vegetables, eat fruits to help you. No matter the cream you rub, if you don't eat good food, your body will, your skin will not be okay. Beauty attracts. And you know, men are attracted by what they see. So give them what they need to see. Package yourself. Life is all about packaging. Rebrand yourself. The same thing is applicable to man. Don't just say, I beg, I've already gotten married. Remain cute. Remain a gentleman. So that you keep on being attractive to your wife. So let us look at another part, another factor we need to be afraid of. We need to fight. The issue of uh, trust. Lack of trust has caused so many problems in our marriage. We don't even trust each other. And let me ask you, are you worthy of trust? Many of us have betrayed our spouses and we have lacked that trust. If you're trustworthy, Please keep on being trustworthy. But if you have lost yours, try to reclaim it back. What do I mean? Your husband just traveled for a job that will last maybe for a week or a month. The next thing you have jumped into the arms of his best friend. How do you think that trust will be retained? In the same vein, a man, your wife trusted you. Before you know you have started dating different guests and started sitting around. That love and trust she has for you will vanish. So if somebody has trusted you, don't betray that love. Don't take them for granted. Don't take them for granted. Make sure you remain worthy of trust. Because this trust can increase, it can diminish. And we are the cause. The reason why it diminishes, what we do. Somebody has trusted you. And you're not, you're not taking that person for a fool. Somebody might look so... But the person might be tender in heart. We wives were tender. Please treat us with care. Handle us with care. Don't break our hearts. Don't allow that love we have for you to be, to be crushed. I'm not saying that men are the only one being unfaithful. Women also cheat. And it's very, very appalling, very, very disappointing, very, very annoying. Please let us work on ourselves and let her to be contented with our spouses. I thought about uh, lack of trust. Let us look at another another major factor, which is finance. Money has caused so many harm in our homes. I heard of a couple that just got married newly. After the marriage, the money they were spread by friends and well wishes. The wife gathered the money and dashed away. That means she was after the money. So let us not see money as everything. The money is good, but if you really love that your spouse, don't allow money to scatter your home. If you choose to have joint accounts with your spouse, that is wonderful. If you choose to have different accounts, it depends on what works for you. What works for, what works for A and not work for B. So don't copy what the other spouse or couple are doing. It might not work for you. Whatever thing both of you agree to do, do it. But try to be straightforward. Don't allow money to cause issue. Don't allow money to cause problem between you and your husband. Don't ever give the devil the chance to come in. Because once he comes in, he will, when you open the door for the devil, it becomes difficult for him to leave. So don't allow the devil to enter into your home. Learn how to manage finance. 
properly. Another thing it should be, uh, it should be aware of is the being wasteful, being wasteful. Don't be a wasteful husband or a wasteful wife. Once money enters the house, you go and groove it. Learn how to manage man. Learn how to invest wisely. It's not every money that comes your way that is meant to be spent. Many of us, once you get your salary, you dash out with friends to go and squander the money. And you come home empty handed, like a pocket son. How do you expect that home to be smooth and sweet? Money is good, but the same money has read all things. So let us learn how to manage our resources. Don't be wasteful. You wife, don't always go to party wearing the friend I should be, I should okay, this, that, expensive apparel and, and clothes. Even if you are doing making the money, learn how to invest. Because very soon children will start coming in that home and they need to be treated well. They need to go to good universities and need to wear good clothes and eat good food. So that's why you must invest. Because a good man leaves inheritance for his children, children. If you are not a good man, you just squander everything you earn. And when your children come, they will start suffering. And they will not call you a great dad if you have done so. So because of your children, don't be wasteful. Learn how to invest wisely. Not being able to account for finances also cause problems. Many of us don't give proper accounts. A good husband or a good wife must be accountable. Accountability should be your watchword. How the money, if your husband gives you an ATM card to go and withdraw, be able to account for him how the money is being spent. Likewise, if your wife is one any more or higher than you, lay out and he gives you access to the money, learn how to spend it with probity. Transparency and accountability. And probability. If he asks you or she asks you a question, answer. Don't feel bossy after I'm the husband. You are the husband, but you're not the one making the money after I'm your wife. Even if you're the wife, uncle, you are not the one suffering to make the money. So learn how to spend your wife, your husband's money wise and with prudence and good discretion. Don't just waste it. Every week you are in party. Every week you are throwing party. Who are you trying to impress? Try to be yourself. Plan well. I manage resources very well because the money might not keep my my stop coming. It might not. Or that digide, or that digide. I don't want better. So the little opportunity you have, invest it so that if the money stops coming, you know how to, you know, adjust, and be able to work with the ones that are at your disposal or the ones that are available. So waste or wasteful, waste being wasteful can cause problems in your marriage. It can turn, it can, it can, it can, it can crash it. So avoid it. What? Avoid it by all means. Another one is religion. It has destroyed so many homes. And some families where an elder comes to marry their daughter, they ask, "Which church do I attend?" Ah, if you must marry my daughter, you must follow her to our church. What nonsense! As a matter of fact, your daughter doesn't have a church. Listen to me, youth. You don't have a church until you get married. Ladies, I'm talking to you now. If you say you have accepted this man, you love this man, you want to spend the rest of your life with him, you must be able to accept the church, his religion. That is why you must be mindful of who you are dating, who you intend to spend the rest of your life with. If you marry any man, be ready and be willing to be submissive to him, follow him to his church. You don't have a name until you get married. You don't have church until you get married. You don't have a mosque. You don't have any place of worship until you get married. Will you get married, both of you? Some men not even care whether you follow them or not, but some do. So what works for A might not work for B. But I want you to get it at the back of your mind, ladies, that you don't have a church or denomination until you get married. The church of your husband determines your own church. Even your son's name. It's why you want to get married that your husband, you, you have a name. It should be me sis. He can be miss. You are still, you are still answering miss. When you get married, you become missus. Your name changes. Your status change. So let us try to know our limits. Let us know what we are destined to be. Let us know that it's wonderful to be a woman. And when you know your pattern play, it everything falls falls in well, and the life becomes more attractive. So religion should not tear your home apart. It should not scatter your marriage, you know. Another thing that causes problem in our marriage is a fashion. You know, many men will say, I want my wife to appear sexy. But their way, they, you see them, they package themselves, they will put on ties, good suits. But they want their wife to wear 
to dress like a masquerade in the, of, in the name of being a sexy. You know, I want our men to actually change. Allow your wives to dress the way you want them to be addressed. I'm not saying it's bad to appear sexy or hot, but it should be at the bedroom. You know, when you are in your bedroom, the woman can be naked. She's there with you. She can dress sexy to mesmerize you. You know, to cap to make you to, know, to capture your attention. But when she's at the public place, please let her to be decently dressed so that she can retain her respect as a married woman. Please. You see a woman that has sold a very wonderful gown. She will just bring it so low and all the breasts popped out. So why are you trying to dress, to show breasts? Nobody wants to see it. It is exclusively for your husband. So after sewing a very wonderful long gown, they will tear it from the leg to the laps. And all the laps pops out. Who are you trying to impress? Please, we don't want to see your laps. They are exclusive property. They are just for your husband. And our, our husband, please, let us not be the one urging them to dress like that. It looks so irresponsible. It doesn't accord them any respect at all. Most girls don't want to dress that way. Their husband are the one pushing them. He must address, he must dress sexy. Who are you trying to impress? Is she competing with anyone? Among all the ladies in the world, you chose her. You have to be proud of her. Let her clothing is just to cover nakedness and to look good. Not, I mean, trying to seduce someone else. You should be the one she will she, she seduce, not someone else. Please, let us be mindful of how we, we dress. Let's package ourselves decently. So that there will be dignity in our personality. Because dressing and fashion portrays your personality to others. The way you are, you, you, you are dressed is the way you will, will be addressed. If you dress like a prostitute, people will not accord you the respect. Nobody will even know that you are a married person. So please, this problem is actually always with our, our ladies. And 75% of this problem is being contributed by our men. Because they, you want your wife to be hot. So that your friends will know that you're married to a sexy lady. But please, that should be at the bedroom, not at the public scene. So let's go ahead. Another thing that causes problem in a marriage is a, what I call a lack of communication. How can you be in a room and you don't talk? You have to communicate. Rant, talk, discuss, share views and opinions together. That's why you are a couple. You can't just be there. The other one is doing his own thing, pressing your phone. This one is, no. Try to rapport. Rub minds together. Talk. Laugh. Play. Marriage is fun. Let us not make it to look so solitary, so, um, I mean, what do I use? Many of us have made marriage to look so boring. Make it to be lively. Fun. Talk. Gossip. Talk things as couple. Communicate well. Open up your mind to each other. And let your couple, I mean your spouse, know what you have in mind. If you, if you don't talk, how would your, your spouse know what you're thinking? He's not spirit. She's not spirit. So open up. Marriage is fun. Let us enjoy marriage. So another thing I want us to look at is what I call a lack of openness. You know, many of us are not open to our spouses. And it's not bad. It's not good. It's very, very bad. Because once you start being secretive, that is where infidelity comes. Infidelity thrives in secrecy. Openness is very, very vital in marriage. Be open. Let your spouse know what you're planning. Let him or her know your visions and your plans. Many of us will go to the length of buying a land that is our husband and our wife. It is wrong. You go at his back, you buy land, and he's not aware. Why are you now a couple? Why are you now a couple? Many will say, I want to surprise you. Please keep that surprise. I don't like that kind of surprise. Carry your wife along. Carry your husband along. Openness is very, very important and expedient in marriage. If you're not open to your husband, there might not be trust. If you're not open to your wife, she might not trust you. So openness is very, very, very vital when we talk about marriage. Another thing is sexual intercourse. <laughs> This is a very wonderful topic. And many people, they shy away from it because we are hypocritical by nature. 
Men are hypocritical. Women are hypocritical. Nobody wants to talk about sex. But that our eighty five percent of your life as a couple protest about this topic sex and you shy away from it. Maybe because of religion. It's not spoken in the church at home. They see it as a taboo. That's why shouldn't go out, they go and learn stuff that are that are bad. So we should be free to discuss about sex because our life revolves around sex. As a couple, sexual intercourse is like oil that lubricates your marriage. It's a lubricant. If you don't lubricate your marriage, it will expire. It will knock in gin. So make sure you give it to each other. The husband is, is you know, has a right to have it. The wife has a right to have it. Anytime she wants to have it, anywhere he or she wants to have it, you know, they have given you a certificate even before you started the marriage. So you have a, you have what you call a, you have, you 